over the hills and far away. That's where I've been. I've been over the hills and far away. I just got back from Barcelona on the HP4 and an R1 and a ZX10R 2016. Uh, we've been doing a test. Oh, what was that? We've been doing a test for 44 teeth. A massive road test, huge. All the way from uh, the UK down to a track called Park Motor, just outside Barcelona. And um, and also on that test, I rode this down here. There, here, there, everywhere. This is obviously, oh, it's in, I've, I've, I, need, I haven't changed the suspension settings since the track, so it's all a bit hard. But I can press some buttons in a minute. Oh! But yeah, so I thought I'd do a little update video. Update video! On the HP4. Considering this was, this bike was ready for the, the salvage yard, the knackers yard. And it cost me, people ask how much it cost to fix. It was about £2,000. So in all, we're kind of sitting at about, what did I buy it for? Six? So we're sitting at about eight grand. But it's no different from a brand new one. It's just got some scratches on it. And the V5 says it's been written off. If this was a brand new bike, or a special, oh, I don't want to put miles on the HP4, I wouldn't have taken it to Barcelona. I'm so glad I did, because I'm not going to give away the results of the tests, but um, it was very good having this there, particularly for the road ride. What's he doing? He's having a wee. And I got my little nipple here, so I had my sat nav mounted on that. I had my little screen from the Suzuki, the old Jixa screen I went to Barcelona last time with, if you remember that. Uh, and it was excellent. It was a fucking brilliant time. A brilliant time was had by all. There were some ups and some downs. Everything you want from a bit of touring, really, a bit of adventure. We ran out of fuel at one point in the middle of nowhere. Um, but all of that, all of that series, I did. I did some uh, vloggage on the way down, um, so that will be coming out here soon. But all the rest of it will be on 44 Teeth channel, I'll link it in the description. By the way, that's, let me just check the camera's recording, hello! That's what a lot of my time has been taken up doing, is trying to get that off the ground and it's been so, uh, such a lot of hard work, I thought it would be way easier than it is. Um, and the reason we're doing it, I, I you know, I want to... I want to change the way the motorcycle industry reports on things. No one watches shitty videos like, Hi, we're at the test of the so-and-so, standing in front of a camera with a microphone. It's just shit. So we're trying to bridge that gap between the vlogosphere, do you like that word? And mainstream big publications, which fuck everything up. And the thing is, they're, they're fucked, because particularly the magazines, because if they put a video up saying, Oh, we're, we're doing this test. Uh, great. They're restricted on what they can say, because if they say it all in the, the, the two-minute, three-minute video, then no one's going to buy their magazines. And then they won't have any advertising money from all the people that put adverts in these things that go on people's tables for a week and they go in the bin. So they're kind of a bit screwed at the moment. Uh, I don't see that as the way it should go. I, I think it should be more about interacting like what we do with 44 teeth and more about a user generated content and just actually not being a slave to advertising which is why we're still trying desperately hard to not have any adverts on that website because we don't want someone to go oh yeah here's you know x amount of thousands of pounds but be nice to us that's not that's not the way it should be so we're trying to do this rewards program which is basically like the codes do you remember the codes i did for action cameras which is uh, vlog him, which still works. So go on and have a look. It's, it's 44 rewards and uh, it's got all sorts of stuff on there, like insurance stuff. Oh, interestingly, insurance. Um, you know, I always have a, oh, I'm gonna slow down because I can't, I'm not wearing earplugs. So it sounds really loud. So I don't think the, the microphone's gonna pick this up. Um, but you know, I always have a go at insurance companies. Well, one of them actually got in touch and was like, well, look, you know, we're, we're starting out this new one and we don't think we're that bad. So we're going to interview them again on 44 Teeth 
and they, they seem to be well up for kind of whistleblowing on the insurance industry and saying well this is actually how it is and this is what this is what other companies do to load the premiums and blah 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 so that'd be interesting so if anyone has any insurance questions about bike insurance uh, put it in the comments below don't pull out in front of me what the fuck's this dick? so yeah so we just got back from Barcelona we took the, those three bikes down I took my GS down uh, as a camera bike and it had all our shit in we just had some Krieger luggage on um, and it was it was brilliant time brilliant time and uh, and this little baby this written off sad poor neglected ready for the knackers yard bike performed flawlessly you know and I, and I like the way that I kind of saved its life and it's done more miles now than, than with me in the past two months than it has in its whole life I think it's nice saving bikes it feels good and it feels like I know this sounds really weird and a bit hippie oh god this is pushed so hard uh, it feels like it appreciates it. I know that sounds really stupid, but it does. So yeah, so I didn't mind putting a tank bag on it or a tail pack because it's already been scratched. So I'm just left to enjoy the performance of the bike and not worry about it. I'm really, really, really happy with it. Really happy with it. Oh. So yeah, so I've been doing that. So I got back from Barcelona. Um, and just kind of fucking around really. I want to do another trip, but the one thing that was really clear about the Barcelona trip, because you have to keep stopping and there's loads of people, we had loads of cameras to organize. It all got a bit stressful for me and a bit like, oh, oh, oh. I just want to do like a no bullshit tour. And um, just me, a camera, very much like the GSX-R one I did. Just me on my own. I think, I think there's a level of honesty there, which, which lacks when you have other people, kind of honesty and vulnerability. So I really want to do that and uh, I think I'm going to try and tie it in with Jimbo, I don't know, it must be at least, I don't know, two, a year and a half ago, I put a video up about uh, when I broke up, split up my divorce and all that shit and at the end of it there was a little tiny bit about depression and how I suffer from it and blah 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 blah. Not a, like a poor me thing, just that little tiny snippet of video has drawn so many people to email me, Facebook me, Twitter, whatever, all that shit. And it's something that I, I feel really strongly about. And everyone, so many people suffer from some kind of mental disorder. And it's so, I don't know, everyone just feels like a bit shy to talk about it. But you just got to get it out. So from where I am, I know that sometimes it's not always very easy to explain to someone how you feel and I, and I get that and I want to do this tour um, and share everything I've learned and everything I've been through and really break it down to like the most basic human level and just say look we all have shit fucking stuff to deal with and this is how I deal with it or this is what I've this is what I've done which has made it a little bit easier or this is definitely what not to do for example alcohol is a, a massive no-no like if I get pissed I wake up in the morning like 6.50 a.m. just crying for no reason just like oh because it's just such a depressant anyway I'm meeting um, spicy 110 there he is there he is he just dropped his chewing gum hello mate you're right. oh oh